The return of spring is an exciting time for everyone, but especially for athletes. In Massachusetts, most high schools are ready for their spring athletic seasons to begin on Monday, March 16th, 2020. For these kids, playing their sports keeps them going. Many of them put in countless hours of work to excel when the season comes around, if the season comes around. On March 12th, just the Thursday before the start date of the new season, the landscape of the whole world was soon to change. Over the past few weeks, we've seen COVID-19 spread around the globe. Of course, March 13th last year was a, was a tough day that we lost school for two weeks and we, and, we, and we postponed sports for two weeks. Honestly, at that time, I didn't anticipate us still going through this. Um, we'd heard about COVID, but we didn't really know. Um, we weren't really that worried about it. They said we got two weeks off for school. I feel like everyone was kind of excited. We were like, two weeks off, then we'll go back, we'll finish the year, um, have our sports, which wasn't the case. And looking back on that now, it's crazy to think how wrong we were about that. It seemed like every school and business on the planet had shut down, and the whole world was at a standstill. At the time, the next steps were hard to predict, until it became clear that kids weren't stepping foot into their school buildings for the remainder of the school year. No school obviously meant no sports, and no 2020 season for all the spring athletes. What were your initial reactions to the pandemic? When I think about a year ago, I never, ever thought about it impacting this year's uh, fall, winter, or spring season. I thought that we would perhaps have to cut out a few games in the spring, but that we'd get to tournament play and uh, we'd finish the, the uh, season in June, maybe a little delayed, but that we would uh, we'd be able to cap the year. Never did I think that we would end up canceling the rest of the season. And then uh, coming into the, to the new year with uh, pushing everything back. Um, I thought we'd be out of it in maybe a month or two. I thought we'd start sports late or we'd have some, some protocols. I, I, I... When we got shut down last March, it was, three days before the start of spring sports. And I don't think any of us envisioned uh, <laughs> how far that would go. I, th I think we thought we would be out of school for two weeks and then we would, we would start spring sports up at the beginning of April and then it became the beginning of May. And then they made the decision when Governor Baker closed schools for the remainder of the year that, that we wouldn't be playing sports. How much collaboration has there been between people and organizations to return to sports safely? Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, so that's one organization. Um, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, another organization. Uh, the uh, Massachusetts Secondary School um, Association, which is a, a third association that's affiliated with the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, or MIAA. Uh, and all of those organizations have provided feedback along with the Mass Department of Public Health and the Needham Department of Public Health along with our school physician and our director of health services. So there have been a lot of moving parts and pieces with different organizations. Um, and I would say at the end of the day, the most important advice that I've gotten uh, has been through our local partners in the Department of Public Health and our school physician, Dr. Stern, because they know our community, they know our facilities, they know our students and our coaches and families, and they can really help guide us uh, to make good decisions. And um, we've helped each other out. We, we've, we've postponed games for other schools having COVID issues, or we've played games at home instead of going to their spot because they have might right of rink issues, or they might have a field issue or court. And we've met more than we have as long as I've been an athletic director. We're meeting almost weekly or, or bi-weekly to talk about the different challenges that we face, bounce ideas off of each other in terms of how one school is running something uh, versus how a different school is, is running something. But what, what we've learned is that every town is different and every board of health and school administration is different and has, and has different concerns and thoughts on, on ways to, to administer their athletic program. Um, I, I keep saying to our coaches that the masks stink. No one wants to wear a mask when they play basketball or play hockey or play football, right? Um, but 
if we told the they had to wear a mask and a blindfold and their shoes tied together, I think every kid would still play. We started the fall season in pods, in smaller pods within the Bay State Conference to make sure that we're all following the same guidelines. And I'm very proud of the work that we've done here in Needham with Dr. Gudekantz and Mr. McDonald and Ms. Singer. All of the, it's been a complete team effort. And we've shared a lot of the information that, that, that we're doing with other schools in the Bay State Conference. So there's some consistency across the board. And we try to put out information with the different school policies. So everyone's on the same page. Were friends, family, and fans able to watch the athletes play under the new guidelines? This school is, is a social endeavor, and it's all about our students. And yet, particularly at the high school, there are so many events, beginning in the middle school and at the high school, where we have families engaged. They show up for concerts. They uh, come to plays and musicals and of course they attend athletic events. Struggled with it and ultimately decided that the only way we could really get around that was to stream events uh, to, the, to the degree that was possible. Uh, so I think the, the, the biggest complaint is obviously the lack of spectators and we're, we're doing our best and we're following the, the guidelines that have been set forth from the EEA and the Department of Public Health in terms of what we can do for spectators. And it's changed. In the, in the fall, it was two spectators uh, per athlete. In the winter, with sports being inside, like basketball and, and hockey, then you have to go by what the, the facility rules are. So with basketball, you know, we, we have a, a no visitor policy in the buildings at the time. For hockey games at Babson, they had a, a, a policy of no visitors. And I understand it's frustrating and people want to be able to watch their kids. So through the support of the, the Booster Club, we were able to get iPads to start live streaming games. So that's something that we did for, for basketball and hockey and, and swimming, so that even though people couldn't be there in person, that they'd still be able to, to watch the kids compete. You know, even into this season, we've been able to, we allowed, I think, uh, senior night, we allowed some of our, our families to come in for, to kind of acknowledge and celebrate our seniors. And that was really important to be able to do that, uh, to do that in person, because it, 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 you know, it's all about the game and it's all about the, uh, um, the strategy and, and getting out on the field. And all of it is a social endeavor, not just for the athletes, but for the fans and for families. How has the mental health of athletes been affected during the pandemic and while trying to return to sports? Um, I love playing baseball in the spring. It's something I look forward to every year. So when that was canceled, it was, it was hard just not to be with a team. And I had so many expectations for last year and my first high school season. But um, like more than that, I felt bad for the seniors and the kids that were looking to get recruited and stuff that year who missed out on a big opportunity. We've seen in the pandemic more than we've seen in recent years that mental health is at the forefront um, of our thinking with students. So if we, if we go back to a year ago with that initial shutdown, I think the, the most important part for the spring coaches last year was to stay connected with their athletes. And for those spring athletes last year that lost their entire season, uh, it was important for them to, to stay engaged. And I think throughout that two month period as we were pushing things back and, and hopeful that we would be able to do something in the spring last year, the coaches worked really hard to stay engaged with the kids and provide some hope and, and, and information about ways they could stay engaged both mentally and physically with the games that they love. And even this year, as we, we started in the fall and through the, the winter and fall two season, the, the priorities of the season have, have changed a little bit. And they, they're more focused on getting the kids out there and playing the sports that they love and being with their teammates and their friends and being part of something bigger than themselves and less worried about wins and losses and playing time and things like that, but more making sure that the, the kids are engaged and, and competing all those things, but also you just feel like if you cause an outbreak of COVID um, within your team or within a certain sport, it's your fault that no one can play and it's all on you. So everyone's more mindful because of that, I think. Um, if they are checking in, if they're, if they're turning on their cameras, 
if they're focused in class, um, because that's usually a correlation. If they're not doing well in school and they're not checking in um, with their teachers, uh, they likely checked out with their mental health and their, their social emotional health. I mean, that's the point of the sport is to compete, to win something bigger than just each individual game. And I feel like for some kids, it made each season feel uh, less meaningful. Looking into the future as the pandemic comes to an end, what still needs to happen and what are you excited for? The biggest thing is staying diligent, right? We see the vaccinations going up. We're seeing protocols being lessened um, or, or lifted. Um, you're seeing a lot of student athletes, uh, students in general, families, people in general, um, being a little more lackadaisical with the protocols. I think the biggest thing is we have to stay diligent um, about wearing masks and, and, and making sure if you're carpooling to sports that you're wearing masks in the car and you're not sharing water bottles. And when you're on the bus, you, when you're eating, you're not eating with, a, with someone next to you and certain things that may be allowed to be done in, in an outdoor venue or an outdoor capacity that you're still being diligent about the rules that we put in place so that there isn't a shutdown. So it's all about the, the education of our protocols and not just when they're when you're on the field or on the court but things you're doing outside of it and it goes back to what i said in the winter so we've you know we've instituted a no carpooling policy that you should arrive to practices or games and go home either by yourself or or with uh, someone from your household it's something that it's tough to police but we're we're asking for for families to to do the right thing and it it, it all comes from a, a place of not wanting to have to shut down sports so as we get into the spring, it's, it's, it's challenging for everyone, not just at Needham High School or within the athletic program, but all around for people to, to stay vigilant and, and, and stay on top of, of all the guidelines. And that's just what we're asking. So to, when you're not on the field or on the court, that you're conscious of, of what you're doing and, and who you're hanging around with and you're wearing a mask and, and, and following the protocols. You know, you see, you see everyone's faces on your team, like you actually see their reactions. Um, you can hang out with your teammates more outside of practice, outside of games, things like that. Well, I know. Um, I don't understand the science completely. I know it's going to continue to be important at least through the rest of the school year and maybe into the fall uh, for students and staff to be really vigilant about uh, wearing masks and, and um, even if you've received a vaccine. With vaccinations being distributed across the country, more and more high school teams, whether it be soccer, baseball, or basketball, are beginning to return to play without the usage of masks and with fans in the stands. The page is being turned on this pandemic and things are returning back to normal. Hopefully we can leave the mask behind for good and we won't have to play through another pandemic.